please be seated. Just for a little bit, I'm going to stand a little bit more. Today we celebrate joyfully the great feast of Pentecost, how the Holy Spirit descended upon the holy disciples and apostles in Jerusalem and many other faithful. We heard from the book of Acts of the Holy Apostles how this occurred, how the disciples were moved to, to speak in various foreign tongues. The Holy Spirit moved them to bring enlightenment to the world. There was thundering, and everyone around knew that something remarkable was happening. And this remarkable event, we celebrate each and every year, 50 days after the resurrection of Christ. Our Lord, first and foremost, came into this world to save us, to release us from the grip of sin, and to bring us unity, unity with each other, unity from within, and unity with God. Because God is love. And we, being created in the image and likeness of love, long for love, long for unity. And true unity only comes from God, and with God, and by God. And our Lord came into this fallen world to restore that unity. He took flesh and descended up, or arose on the cross and died on the cross for our salvation, descending into hell to convict sin, to defeat hell, to overcome death, to break down the wall of enmity that St. Paul writes about that existed between us and God. And this salvific act was, a, was fulfilled in completion in His resurrection. And for 40 days our Lord, after His resurrection, still dwelt on earth and interacted with his disciples and apostles appeared to many and instructed them on what is to come. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. In the heavenly kingdom there are many mansions that my Father has created. But if I do not go, the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I go, then the Holy Spirit will come and fill all things, Jesus says. And on the 40th day, our Lord ascended into heaven in His flesh and sat and sits at the right hand of God the Father. And on the 50th day, 10 days after His ascension, the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples and apostles and fills them with knowledge, raises them up to the dignity to commune with God and gives them uni unity, unity of mind, body, and soul, so that they can with courage and with faith and love preach the resurrection and defeat of death. And we see how the Spirit moved these people, moved the holy disciples and apostles to go to far away places. They endured all kinds of suffering. Even St. Paul writes about this in his epistle to the Corinthians. He says, I consider that God has left us as last among all the faithful. We are persecuted. We hunger, we thirst, we are imprisoned, we are defamed. But all of this for the glory of God, for they were willing to endure all kinds of suffering and, sh and 
obstacles and difficulties and challenges in order to preach, in order to live in the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit comes upon each of us after we are baptized. We receive the sacrament of chrismation, but that is just a small little seed. So many parents baptize their children thinking that they're giving their children a golden ticket to heaven. All they need to do is be baptized and they're saved. It's like telling a mother, all you need to do is give birth to this child. You don't have to feed it. It will be okay. It's alive. Ridiculous. Mothers are willing to die for their children, even well into adulthood. And they feed and nourish and support. And we, in the faith, have to nourish and feed and support even more so that our children grow in faith, so that the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of life of their soul can grow and mature and bring forth many fruits. The Holy Spirit is to move all of us Saint Luke of Crimea says, just look at the scene of Pentecost and you see how the Spirit moved them and changed them. They spoke in different tongues. They healed people. They raised paradigms. They gave sight to the blind. They cast out demons. They preached in faraway countries. Their entire lives changed. And we, Having received the Holy Spirit, what do we manifest? How has the Spirit moved to us? How has the Spirit changed us? How does the Spirit motivate us? A, a stark contrast that all of us are guilty of. We are quicker to sin than we are to forgive. We are quicker to impose our will than we are to be humble. We are quicker to give in to the desires of the flesh than we are to abstain. We are quicker to anger than we are to hold our tongue. We are quicker to sin than we are to do righteousness. But the Holy Spirit does not abandon us, even in all of this. The Holy Spirit, we call upon Him every day when, our, when we begin our prayers. O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fill us all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls. Come and abide in us. Strengthen us. Cleanse us. Purify us. Saint Theophan the Recluse says that we in sin lost harmony within. The body is always at war with the soul, with the soul, and the mind is lost and confused. But the Holy Spirit brings union to us within. Our interior life is once again whole by virtue of the Holy Spirit. Mind and body and soul now are in unison. But that requires from us effort of prayer and fasting and other works of discipline. St. Firat, the Hierarch of Moscow, says that the Spirit instills in us strength to follow the narrative.
narrow path of self-denial. Because that's the only path to salvation. Self-denial. That's not easy. It's not easy to deny one's will. Look how difficult it is simply to bite one's tongue when we're angry. And here we have to deny our entire will. Here we have to take up our cross and fight the passions and fight with our body is quote unquote naturally desiring. But it is only the path of self-denial that we are saved. Christ says, if you want to follow me, in other words, if you want to be saved, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow. This we can't do on our own, and all of humanity has proven that until the coming of Christ. But with the help and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we are given strength to do just that, to walk the path of self-denial, the path of salvation. That's why today is so joyous, because God strengthens us to do the impossible. We think to ourselves, I can never overcome my weaknesses. I can never forgive this person. I can never let go of this resentment. I can never overcome this passion. It has a grip on me. But the Holy Spirit strengthens us to break the bonds of sin. And the Holy Spirit brings us unity. Oh, how all of us long to, be un to have unity within. And if we accomplish this with the help of God, we are raised to the dignity to commune with Him. Our first original goal in life, given to Adam and Eve, to commune with God. And the Holy Spirit raises us up to that high dignity to once again commune with God, the source of our life. That's why today is so joyous. And we decorate the church with all kinds of greenery to remind us that now we have new life. We have fervent life. We have life in God. And we will never be abandoned. Regardless of difficulties and trials and tribulations in this fallen world, we will always have strength from above. The Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, enlightening us to avoid darkness and error, who is everywhere and fill us all things. O Holy Spirit, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O oh, good one. Amen.